Ooh, look at that. Look at that. Handsome man right there. <laughs> yeah. We have... Guys, we're here again. The BJJ talk show. We're with John Salter. Is a, he's a MMA Bellat Bellator fighter. And also with Victor. Victor, again, you guys already know Victor. I mean, I've been here. This is my like a sixth show, right? So Victor, Victor is going to be on a. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna have to come up with a show for him. What do you guys think? If you guys uh, like it, comment below here. We might bring create a show for him. All right. Yeah, I'll figure it out. I'll figure out something else besides the talk show that I can do. Maybe people would want to watch me do something else. So maybe mow my lawn or something. <laughs> Guys, just really quick, this uh, is a sponsored program. Uh, uh, talk show is sponsored by Trap BJJ. Trap BJJ is offering a seven free limited uh, days trial. So go there and check that out. Also, Trap is doing a course is now, Victor, which is uh, one with me, one with uh, Max Jimenez, and another one with Fernando Hayes. Many other guys are coming up soon. And one thing that about what Trap is doing is like, uh, is a limited offer that if you purchase one of the course, you're gonna get a free virtual private lesson with instructors, which is amazing. You know, like, like you 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 take someone course and then you have time to hang out and talk to them and learn techniques from them uh, personally. That that would be great. So also we have break grip. Uh, sponsoring the episode, guys. We're also gonna give a twenty-five dollars uh, this uh, uh, twenty-five dollars gift card for you. So that's that's my uh, that's my advertise part. Right? <laughs> we're getting we're getting more people on the show, and I appreciate you guys support. Like a lot of people are joining us. Please give your like. Please share this video, guys. It's very important for us to keep up the show. I right, share the video, like, comment below. This help us to get engaged, uh, to engage more people, and then Facebook will deliver more of uh, this video. All right. So again, we're here with John. All right. So Victor, you can speak. Hey. John, if you want to just uh, give a quick uh, introduction about you for everyone, if, if somebody doesn't know you at. Oh, everyone knows John. Everyone knows John, for sure. <laughs> it's a playboy. Look at those glasses. <laughs> oh, wait up. Hold a moment, John. I, 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 we can't hear you right now. So okay, I think JP. John, um, let's connect you back in, all right? Let's, uh, guys, we, I, here on our side, we cannot hear John. But uh, let me connect him back in. <laughs> What about now, John? Can we hear you? All right, John. Let's uh, let's let connect again. We're gonna log in and log out. Log in again, okay? Please. All right, guys. So we had some uh, technical issues here, but we're gonna be with John soon. There is gonna be um, like we mentioned before. We're gonna have our uh, our giveaway, and we have a we have a specific question for the day. So. Get ready. Stay tuned with the show. You're going to be able to give your your guess, and um, it's actually a really good question. And uh, John was able to share that information with us, so I'm excited about that. Can you hear us? Hear us now, John? There you go. Yeah, we can hear you. Now. All right, I gotta go out and come back in. Let's see. So, John, go ahead and give us a little spiel about yourself. But tell. Oh no! What was that, Victor? You can't hear me? I hear, I you can hear me now. Yeah. Okay. Just just give us a little intro about yourself. Um, gosh, I guess, uh, you know, as far as for the grappling community, I started wrestling uh, when I was 12, won a state championship in high school, went and wrestled in college, won a national championship in college, um, started jiu-jitsu while I was in college a little bit, really jumped into it when I got finished up. And since then, I've been fighting and uh, training full-time. Uh, fought for the UFC, fight for Bellator now. I used to, uh, fought for Strike Force in the past. Um, so I kind of fought a little bit of everywhere. Uh, love where I am in Bellator and um, and trying to compete in Jiu Jitsu when I, when I don't have any fights coming up. 
So you've um, you've been grappling ever since you were 12, um, already jumping into that. What can you say is the biggest contrast? We've had this discussion over and over when you used to coach me, because you used to coach me back when I was a purple belt, blue belt, purple belt. And then you 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 were staying in Fresno for a couple of years. Then you moved to Wilmington, North Carolina. Um, what's the biggest contrast between wrestling and Brazilian jiu-jitsu? And you could be honest about it because we've had discussions with different uh, professors and they've been kind of controversial topics. So being able to give your opinion off of that, what's the difference between jiu-jitsu and wrestling? The mindset, you would say. Okay, first of all, being a wrestler, obviously, you know, it shaped my life. I'm a big proponent of wrestling. But if I want to say the biggest thing about it, jiu-jitsu is great and fun. Wrestling is terrible. Um, we wrestle, uh, you know, a couple times a week still. And it's everybody's least favorite day of the week or two days of the week when we go wrestle. Um, and I always say in jiu-jitsu, you're taught if something's not working, then that means something else is open, so go for it. In wrestling, you're taught if it's not working, you're just not doing it hard enough. So I guess it's the work harder, not smarter mentality, but it makes you tough and uh, makes you able to grind. Would you say that um, wrestlers uh, have the easiest transition to come into jiu-jitsu with having that mentality? Because, you know, coming getting someone just from – the street, they, they don't understand pressure. They don't understand that, that work ethic. What, what would you say is the biggest advantage from a wrestler transitioning? You know, I think that's one thing is that we drill so much in wrestling. You know, you're drilling all the time. And it's part of what makes wrestling so terrible. But um, I think uh, that's probably the biggest thing. And we just, you know, we're used to grinding. We're used to being on top. But the, the, it, also, when a lot of wrestlers start jiu-jitsu, obviously we're going to get submitted. We don't know what we're doing in jiu-jitsu. And a lot of people take that as, well, I don't want to do this anymore. stupid. And they never get good, you know. And that's why you wrestlers that you know are out there taking everybody down, beating them up until they get submitted. And I just kind of went the other way about it. Like I, I don't want to be the guy that's terrified to be on the ground with people. I want to be the person that whether I'm on top or bottom, nobody wants to be on the ground with me. And so I took that work ethic of wrestling and and turned it into that. So I think you see a very big difference. You know, you're seeing a lot of guys from wrestling now competing at high levels in jiu-jitsu and winning. But you've still got just as many stud wrestlers coming out of college that won't ever put the time in to get good at it. Yeah, that's that's good when you talk about, you know, like the the mentality, right? Like the wrestlers are just like go, 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 go. Tough guys, but you know, sometimes they don't really look into what's open, right? Like sometimes what's more technical. Uh it's a lot of uh uh, athleticism, right? Athleticism and jiu-jitsu. When you look to jiu-jitsu, the guys are not as as really uh, deep into the athleticism or just uh, the strength part of it. They like they try to think a little bit more into like a chess game, right? Like we, we say that jiu-jitsu is a human chess game. So uh, it's interesting when you talk about that. You know, do you feel that uh, it's not possible to keep doing wrestling later on? Like, because I see a lot of wrestlers, right? Like, well, I wrestle in high school, but they always stop. They quit, right? So how, what what happens on the wrestling side that people cannot do as a lifestyle, right? What, what What's the, uh, what's, what's the odds on that? I don't. Well, you know, I think one thing is, um, you know, when you get to college, you know, just like in jiu-jitsu, you know, if you're, if you're a really good, you know, high-level black belt and you're going to local Nagas, you're probably going to go through the tournaments and get maybe one tough match, you know, mm -hmm. if that. And when you go to the big tournaments, then every match is a grind. It's kind of the same thing in wrestling. When you, If you're a top-level guy in state, you know, if you're state champ, you go throughout the season, you have four tough matches. Um, then when you get to college, every single match is harder than your state finals match, you know. And I think a lot of people burn out on it. And then when you get out of college, there's really nowhere to make money wrestling. Um, and – you know, because like I said earlier, even as a wrestler, wrestling sucks. It's terrible. So I'm not going to open a wrestling gym where adults want to come in and wrestle. But, you know, jiu-jitsu is fun. You learn a lot. You learn how to submit people that are bigger than you. People really love that. So I think there's just such a better outlet in jiu-jitsu once you're an adult. Got it. So, you, so your transition, um, you know, you were coming from high-level wrestler, NEI wrestling champ. Um you thought about going into MMA. Can you go into a little bit details of why you, you wanted to go down that route? You know, maybe at that time when you started training jujitsu, there wasn't that, that BJJ lifestyle, they call it, where you can own a gym, 
make a, a fair living? Was your mentality with like, I want to continue doing this. I don't want to get the nine to five job. What, what, what was your mentality coming out of, of college? Um, well, I guess a little bit of just being dumb, right? I want to go out there and <laughs> Victor, you've cornered me in some pretty big fights. You know, every time I'm sitting in the locker room going, what on earth have I done with my life? I'm about to walk out here and fight. But, um, yeah, I think it was one of those things like I, I wrestled forever. I, uh, you know, competed at such high levels there and I'd really gotten into enjoying MMA and watching it. And I just thought, you know, I, I don't know if I'm at a point in my life where I'm ready to stop competing. I think, uh, you know, at the time I was going straight into uh, grad school and it's like, I guess I'll fight while I'm in grad school. That'll probably get it out of my system. And then it just never did. And, you know, I turned pro, started making some money at it. And, um, then, I, you know, at that point, it's like, well, this is where I'm going to go. And, you know, Victor, for so many times, so long, I always told you I never want to have a gym. That's not what I'm going to do, all that kind of stuff. And you've always been the one, you know, sitting back going, no, you're going to do that one day. It's it's obviously what you like to do. And, um, you know, I kind of got talked into it after saying no so many times. And, you know, I've got Salty Dog Jiu-Jitsu. And I just I, – I couldn't be happier with uh, – the choices that I've made ending up, you know, where I, I am a pro fighter and I, I do have a gym and, you know, I love every minute of it uh, until I'm about to fight. And then I think it's the worst decision on earth. <laughs> so you, you came, you came with the mentality of like, I'm just going to try this out, kind of stuck with it. So it was kind of like, there's a silver lining to it. You ended up finding out that you really enjoyed being a coach. You, you could say that, right? Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I went into fighting. I kept telling myself as an amateur, if I take a loss, this isn't for me. So obviously I'll stop when I lose, you know, and then I went undefeated as an amateur. And then I kind of took that fur that same mentality in my first few pro fights of, you know, at my second pro fight, I'm fighting uh, Roberto Traven, who had been in the UFC. He was a world champion in jujitsu, you know, and I was still telling myself if I, if I can't win this fight, then this isn't the sport for me. I don't need to do this, you know? Um, and then, you know, a few fights later, I was in the UFC. And at that point, I was like, okay, well, I think this is something I can make a run at and I can make a living doing and uh so this is where i'm gonna be and uh you know and you know you always have that idea like yeah i can make good money now but what am i gonna do when i start fighting and um you know i think jitsu has given me the opportunity to have the gym where that's such a great thing for when i am done fighting i have that and i really enjoy it um i love coaching and never thought i'd be the person that said that but i you know i love it and i, I love running the gym so uh just another follow-up question to that you know you you had said and we see this a lot we see a lot of fighters that they don't invest their time in other businesses, right? They they continue fighting. They suffer a lot of concussions. And then all of a sudden you see them going into like other promotions like bare knuckle fighting and not knowing what else to do. And I've always, I've always considered you a very uh, intelligent person because besides, you know, the grappling portion, you're very articulate. You, you enjoy studying. You enjoy knowing the high, uh, the whys and, and the hows. So you don't necessarily just follow the trend. So uh, other than jujitsu and, um, and coaching, is there anything else that you've done on the side? That's, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm a part-time real estate agent right now. That's another thing I really enjoy. Um, you know, and that's something when I get done fighting that I'll be, I'll do a lot more. I'll throw a lot more of my life into, um, but like you said, I, I'll, I'll say, I'm not going to say a name or anything, but I was with, um, a pretty, uh, big name fighter that has been, you know, has fought for a world championship, um, not too long ago. And he was talking about trying to find a way to make money outside of the cage. And it was, you know, I told my wife, that's got for a guy that I have so much respect for. I just hate to hear him say that. And I think as of right now, I think I'm at a point where, you know, I won't ever have that, that problem. And I, I try to always think about that make sure it doesn't happen. And, um, you know, I think real estate in the gym is the way to get around that. So that's why I, you know, focus you know, uh, most people, I think when they get on training, they go home and go to sleep and try to recover for the next one. And I'm usually out doing something else, trying to make sure that I'm prepared that when I do stop fighting, um, you know, I've got careers in other places. So we got, we got, uh, <laughs> we got George right there saying that you jinxed the Niners from getting into the Super Bowl. So guys, um, just a reminder, this is an interactive interview. So if you want to send out Sean, um, John a, a comment or a question, feel free to drop it in and we will uh, we'll share that with you. So yeah, that was George from Fresno. George, I hated to see that for you. I know you're having a hard time that night, so I didn't, uh, didn't bug you, but they looked a little brain dead out there. <laughs> hey, John. Uh, um, so I, I had, uh, when I was a kid, you know, it was like you start training, you're always looking up, you know, 
Hickson Ray is fighting on a he used to fight on, in Japan it was a pride, right? And I was a white belt, blue belt, you know, it was like, man, I gotta I'm gonna I'm gonna have some fight. I'm gonna fight on on the cage on on the ring at some point, right? And those, those guys were my inspiration to like at least I was like at least one time I'll go jump into the cage just to just to have fun, right? And I ended up doing this on uh, 2014. Uh, I did like a Grand Prix style, right? To fight to come to fight here on the on Las Vegas and UFC. Ended up submitting the two guys on the re regionals. I submitted the first two guys. And oh, my, my last man. match, you know, and I knock out the guy. I lean forward and he hit his head on my forehead and cut it uh, here, right, on the sem semi-final. So I ended up my, be able to fight the to fight the uh, the final, right? And I, like a month later, I moved to, to US, which is amazing. But like for me, like I really fought because I really want to test myself. And <clears throat> I didn't really enjoy the lifestyle, you know what I mean? For me, it was like, man, this sucks. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, besides jiu-jitsu, you know, like jiu-jitsu is like, yeah, I'm going to train jiu-jitsu. But when I was like leading up, leading up to the MMA fight, I was like, man, like I don't, I don't really want to go and train, to be honest, you know. But I had to, right? But like, how did, like, how did you start in, uh, in doing MMA? Why do you like it? Why are you still doing it? <laughs> you know, like, I like, and what, what do you take to keep you mo motivated to do that? Um, you know, it's funny. I, I'm going to sound really dumb. You're talking about watching Hicks and the, you know, gets you excited about MMA. Um, it was Tito Ortiz for me. Um, <laughs> that, that, that sounds funny, but at the same time, anytime Tito fights, I'm still going to watch, you know, even though we're all going, oh, God, I shouldn't do this. I'm going to watch. Um, mm -hmm. um, it, you know, it's the same thing. I, uh, like I said, you know, Victor's been in my corner in several big fights. He knows how much I hate every minute of it when we're, when the, we're there. But, um, you know, I think one of the things for me that was really great is going for my whole life, all I'd ever done is wrestle, 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 wrestle. And the great thing about MMA is, you know, we'll go and practice jujitsu. I'm like, God, I don't want to do jujitsu again today. So, you know, then I go back and kickbox. And then when I'm burnt out on kickbox, wrestling. Um, so that way we get to do a lot of different things, you know. And then I think you, for me, uh, I get to the point probably the way you are with jujitsu is anytime you're like, I'm tired, I don't want to train. Then you remember there's somebody else in the world training right now. Yeah. And uh, I got to get, get out there. And even if I want to, I got to make sure that I am because that person's trying to take everything that I've worked for, you know. So, um, you know, most of the time it's not, man, I'm excited to go get better. It's, oh, gosh, I don't want to do this, but somebody's doing it. So I got to. Yeah, I always remember in the gym, you would always say that, that your motivation was always try to outwork someone, right? That yeah. was that was your goal. Yeah, you know, I, so, I was never a super athletic guy. Um, so pretty much everything I knew, I just got to outwork all the athletes. And, um, you know, that's that's what it's going to take to to beat people. So I'm trying to read this question here. So we have Andres, uh, Andres here. Uh, yeah, Does okay. John still keep Mountain Dew and – Uncrustable. Un Can you talk a little bit about Uncrust Uncrustables, John? Yeah, Tell us the, the reason. So um, that's a new word for me, by the way. And you know, part of our nightly routine for a long time, me and Andreas, was you know while watching Dexter, is <laughs> you know uh, eating some Uncrustables, which you don't know what that is. It's peanut butter and jelly sandwich and no crust. It's unbeatable. But Unfortunately, I, I hate to break it to Andreas, but I, I've cut most of the gluten out of my diet, so I don't get to enjoy the Uncrustables anymore. Well, now, yeah. On the other hand, it only makes you stronger and faster, so I'm not cutting that. So let's throw that in there. Uh, we have a, a question for you guys. So if you are sharing the video and uh, you answer this question throughout the interview, if you get it right, you will win a $25 gift card from Break Grip. And they have some really nice merchandise. So the question for this interview is, how many Mountain Dews does John go or drink throughout the month total? And we're going to do it from one to 350 Mountain Dew. <laughs> you, you, know, right? you know, we've always had the joke about me drinking Mountain Dews, and it's just, you know, I always grew up drinking them. 
And I was sitting in Tennessee one time with these people, and they were talking about drinking Mountain Dew, and they're like, it's such a redneck drink. I was devastated. I didn't, <laughs> I, never, I don't think I ever told you that. I was like, I was devastated. So I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What, what's wrong with that? You know what? No, Mountain Dew is not a redneck drink. I think Mountain Lightning is a red drink. That infuriates me. People try to tell me they have Mountain Dew and they have Mountain Lightning. That's that's not an acceptable thing. That's like putting Miracle Whip out and saying it's mayo, you know? Yeah. So that's the question, guys. So how many how many Mountain Dews does John drink per month? So we're putting it from one to, we said 350. I think 350, right? 350. And I will this. So we have uh, people, people the guys are ready. Uh, it was really, def- it kind of made me feel bad about myself. <laughs> So we have a look at no no packs, okay? Like we're talking about the one. Yeah, we're thinking about a can, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. can. Yeah, a can. Yeah, not Victor two asked, liters. Victor so has people saying 150, 20, 24, 180, 62. And, and you guys have one chance, by the way, right? But, but also, Victor, what, yeah. what else do they need to do to to be able to win? You got to share this video, guys. You have to share it on your page. If you don't, if you don't share it on your page, we won't have. I mean, you're not giving us support. We want to give you that free merch. We're giving you an awesome interview here with John. So share on your page. Give us a like and also guess, and then that way JP will end up picking the winner at the end of the interview. For sure. Thank for guys to comment there. Keep going. So uh, you guys can keep going to into the end of the show. Okay, we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be waiting for you. So the, the question here, I think we have another one, was uh, was this question during fight camp or not fighting? We're talking about not fighting, right, John? You cut out Mountain Dew yeah. during the, You have a strict diet you got to follow. So sometimes Mountain Dew has to come out of the yeah. equation. Unfortunately, during a fight camp, there's no Mountain Dew. And while I know that it makes me stronger and faster, science disagrees with me. <laughs> so I, uh, I go with science when I'm getting ready for a fight. So, John, let's, let's jump in a little bit about your MMA career. Um, I've been there when you were fighting at <laughs> – you are going to weigh-ins at very sketchy places, and then I've been to places that have been really nice. And and you had recently just traveled or competed in uh, Tel Aviv, right? Is that what it's called? Uh, Israel? Or what's the, the city, right? Yeah, Tel Aviv? Tel Aviv, yeah. Really nice places. Italy. Um, can you walk us down memory lane uh, like from fighting from Porterville to – now fighting these international fights, uh, what what has been your experience overall? You know, yeah, as being so, an MMA fighter. You know, for anybody that doesn't know, my first fight that Victor ever cornered me in um, was in Porterville, California, in uh, a casino that was so far out in the middle of nowhere that there was no cell phone reception, and um, there was, you know, a, we stayed in a really nice hotel <laughs> that had a sign on the. Board that if you've had diarrhea in the last 14 days, you can't enter the pool. And, um, you know, that's one of the things where you really start wondering, is this really for, you know, am I really wanting to put this work in to get to the top level? <laughs> and um, so, you know, there's been some some days that I would say aren't the proudest. And then, uh, you know, building the way up and, uh, you know, getting to fighting in Bellator and going all around the world to fight and fighting, you know, people that are, you know, good names that people have heard of, it's, you know, it's kind of great looking back and going, man, it took a lot of work to get here, but I'm here and, um, you know, I'm, I'm proud of it. I always think about the night before that fight, there was like two <laughs> crackheads that were next to us and they were fighting over cereal. I remember that. They were yelling, they kept us up late at night. I don't think ever uh, hated anybody as much as they did about the cereal. <laughs> Yeah, they say they hated each other, and then after a while, they, that went away, and it seems like they got over it. So, um, yeah, no, that's 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 good to go down memory lane, and then uh, also going into your grappling career. I mean, think about it. Uh, walk us through ADCC. That was 2017, right? When you did the West Coast Trials. Yeah. So um, I was supposed to fight uh, uh, Alexander Slamenko. And he kept needing time, needing time. So we couldn't fight. And actually, you know, it was you and Andreas that kept pushing me to go to the ADCC trials. And in my mind, I got to go all the way out there. It's just a big hassle. And then, of course, it comes up to Lindsay, my wife, that if I win, we go to Finland. And, you know, Lindsay goes, you're going because I want to go to Finland. And, um, <laughs> and then ran into some tough guys through that tournament. I think I had six matches that day with, uh, you know, Josh Hayden. Um, 
couple of other tough guys and then running I'll up Boehm, Josh, Josh Hunter, Hinger. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and then DJ Jackson in the finals. Um, and, you know, yeah, of course, you you cornered me that whole thing. I think the most fun thing was, um, you know, obviously, Hinger's a stud, and that was a tough match. But after that was over, all the top black belts and Otto sitting in one corner looking over at you and the other going, what's going on? Yeah, who who is this guy? This random guy that's wearing a Nutrishop Nutri Shop shirt. <laughs> Never yeah. seen this guy before. Yeah, with my yeah. fight shorts that I had from when I was an amateur, and I didn't realize how amateur they looked until we got out there. I'm like, oh yeah, nobody nobody wears these for jujitsu tournaments anymore. Can you walk us through though? What was your overall experience with doing that grappling tournament? Was it a really tough tournament for you? And be honest, you know, like um, comparison to your wrestling days, you know, in college. Um, you know, that's, it, it kind of had that feeling of a college tournament where you don't have any easy matches, you know I mean? From you know, my first match, I submitted the guy pretty quick. And, um, but then, you know, I got Josh Hinger, my second match, uh, sorry, not Josh Hinger, Josh Hayden, my second match, who at the time I had no idea who he was. And I didn't know why Sean Hammonds kept texting me about him. I'm like, who is this guy? Why do you keep telling me to keep him off my feet? Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, every match was a pretty close match all the way through. So it kind of had that grind mentality of you're going to go all day and you're not going to get any easy matches. And, um, you know, I, I um, messed my back up a little bit before that. So it was a lot of um, trying to get through that, you know, trying to, you know, recoup for each match. And, you know, got to the finals and I, I had DJ in the finals, you know, and I'm sitting there thinking, well, you know, I've had a good day. I've made it to the finals. I just got to have a good match with DJ and then I can go be – you know, it's a respectable day. And I was like, no, wait. Lindsay was very specific. She wants to go to Finland. So I've got to go out there and get this win. <laughs> First, I was telling myself all day that, you know, the finals matches could be 12 minutes and telling myself, I, the last thing in the world I want is a 12 minute wrestling match with DJ. Please don't let that happen. I don't want to get that tired. And um, of course, that ended up being what we had to have. Thank you, John, for, for sharing that, man. Who's your uh, toughest? Uh opponent in uh, jiu-jitsu or, or no gi jiu-jitsu, right? Or gi or no gi. Who, who's your toughest uh, opponent? Um, as far as, you know, in, in no gi, I would say, like, obviously DJ is, you know, one of the best grapplers on the planet, really tough. But just from the wrestling standpoint, that match, I think, matched up a little better to me. But the hanger match was probably my hardest no gi because, you know, that guy's attacking your neck all the time and you can never stop. So that was – uh, a pretty tiring match, you know, at the end of that, I was glad it was over. Um, and then, you know, I, uh, my first match ever, as a, or sorry, second match ever as a black belt, I had Lucas Leach and that it didn't happen really well for me. Um, that was in the gi and, um, I, uh, I got submitted by him in the gi and that guy, I thought, I really thought it's funny. Most of the matches like, Oh, this guy's not that strong. I can move him around. And then he got on my back, and it felt like somebody three times my size. He was so strong once he got on the back. Do you ever see yourself competing in gi again? Yeah, I do. Um, you know, I, it's not that I don't want to because, you know, we train. We do 50-50 gi training versus no gi training. Even when I'm getting ready for a fight, I train just a bunch in the gi. Um, but, you know, it just kind of comes down to – between the guys that we have here that fight and getting them ready for fights and everything like that is finding time to go, uh, you know, go somewhere for a, a, a big tournament and, you know, any of the local tournaments, I'm always either we're training through them or we're taking guys to compete. So I'm coaching, but, uh, I definitely will compete in the gi again. So we have uh, your, one of your matches, a match a highlight prepared here for us to just show you guys. <clears throat> I don't know if we're going to be able to see it, John, but we're going to still talk it through here. Let's see. Can you see it, John? Uh, no. Uh, my screen's not showing it. So okay. Because okay, you're on your phone, that's why. But there, he's going to play a, a highlight right now for you. Yeah, I'm going to play. I, I, we're going to talk. Can you see, Victor? I can see it. All right, cool. We're going we're gonna to talk and... You might be able to. I'm gonna go on my computer so I can watch it. There, watching it. There might be a delay, but it's it's pretty much um, the Bellator highlight, and it's showing your matches. So you're against uh, Dustin takedown. Jacoby here. You go for a takedown. Yeah, yeah. Can you see it? You take yeah. it back. Yeah. Nope. First fight. Oh, first. 
I think what's crazy is that, you know, most people that, you know, they would have no clue that you have a guard, John, and you have a really good guard, you know, no one's, and, and, and this is the exact, you know, against Halsey, you know, being able to yeah. set him up. I've been in that triangle and it's not, doesn't feel good. You know what I mean? You're, you're so is, calculated with your clothes guard. Is that blood yours, John? Uh, no, oh, I was cut, but it didn't, it wasn't mine. That was all Halsey. I That's cut him over both crazy. Eyes. That was a very uh, bloody match. The actual yeah. Facebook when it, on YouTube, when you put to watch it, it's like, it says that there's not a content that uh, I should be watching. Oh, uh, really? Because uh, I think all the blood, you know, like a really, uh, really yeah. a tough match. Actually, actually, John was just having an uh, Uncrustable and uh, the jelly got all over the place. <laughs> and he, he had it in, he his, had mouth, mouth he had in his shorts. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, you know, um, you know, as far as guard, like, I'll try to. You know, I always hope nobody knows that and, and messes up and, and falls into that guard thinking they're going to relax, you know. And I, my last fight, uh, he was a little too smart. He kept standing up every time I tried to get him in guard. Yeah, if you have a really – you have a great guard, John, and just people don't see that. And they always think that you're just a top player, but it's just your your jiu-jitsu is so solid, man. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Um, you know, so, like I said, it's always something I'm working on because, you know, you always want to be tricky. Um, you know, I get – you get people a lot of times, you know, um, saying stuff because I'm not standing up with guys. But you give me a guy like Chitty Nijkwani, you know, I'm going to take the easy way out. But at the same time, I don't want people to have a lot of tape on me of uh, what they're going to be working for, you know. For sure. So that's why. It's funny. What's that? Because the, 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 the comment was always, oh, John, you're so strong. Is that a pet <laughs> peeve of yours? Like, do people never talk about your technique? You know what I mean? Especially when they train with you? Yeah. And so... Uh, uh, talking about one time ago, back in training in Fresno, people always try to say, you know, we're just strength, we're just strong, you know, we're not technique, technical. So we started calling ourselves the All Strength Squad and just going with it, and uh, <laughs> it drives me insane. To say that. Beautiful jujitsu, man. Back control, mount, top control. You know, like you're, you're very uh, good overall. You know, like. Uh, and it's a great combination for MMA, you know, like. Well, that's, you know, that's one thing we try to do a lot. I'm very fortunate right now. I've got a lot of wrestling. We try to work a lot of just blending wrestling and jiu-jitsu together. So, you know, we're not doing one or the other. We're trying to keep them blending together. We got a comment here saying you're Alabama strong, John. And that's, that's the main reason. That's, that's where. But I think they don't realize it's all the Mountain Dew you've been accumulated in your that's right in your body that released you know i mean it, it's a, a performance enhancer that's not illegal so uh, <laughs> um, yeah uh, now he's uh you're like body control takedown <clears throat> half guard How many how many uh, fights do you have uh, on Bell Bellator? Uh, eight or nine for Bellator. I've had I think, 21 pro fights overall. Uh, I'm trying to think of what exactly what might be eight for Bellator. Um, and uh, <clears throat> with you know, I only lost one for Bellator, and that was with uh, Rafael Lovato, who you know Bobby Carabay is stud. It's just just yeah. And, uh, not that you are on top of you. That transition's perfect, man. Crazy transition. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I think you, I'm, I, on my screen, it's showing the Chitty fight. And yeah, it's a Chitty fight right now. Okay. For some reason, every interview I did for that fight kept like picking me as the the big side of that fight, and that I was coming in to take a loss and all this kind of stuff. And I really thought that as soon as they announced that fight to me, that was such a good fight for me. And um, I was 
I just couldn't believe it, how much uh, I was hearing that in all my interviews. And uh, glad to get that win out. You've had, uh, so far, a great career in Bellator, man. Um, I think I think the next logical thing to talk about before we end up ending our interview is we have to touch this subject. Coach Tucker, how did that begin? <laughs> how did that start? I, I know he's watching right now, or he's probably going to end up seeing this, but, you know, we got to give him a shout-out. And we also got to give a shout-out to your friend. Uh, what's his name? Is his name Corey? Yeah. So we got to give a shout out to Corey. He's he people don't talk about him, but he really is a crucial part of the videos, I think. And uh, he's the unsung hero. So give us a little backstory behind all these videos. Yeah, without Corey, we wouldn't have these uh, videos because, you know, somebody has got to be th strong enough to pick up somebody and throw them like that. Um, and uh, <laughs> so Tucker's that kind of guy that is just born to be picked on, right? And you know me, I've tried to fight being a bully my whole life and finally just accepted <laughs> Sometimes I'm, you know, I'm that guy. And um, so, but Tucker's got a fantastic scream anytime you mess with him. And uh, I was trying to get him to do this video. We were kind of doing stuff around the gym just that we thought was funny, you know, anything else. And trying to do our first video and he would not do it. He's like, I'm not getting slammed. You're not throwing me. I'm not doing that. And I'm just begging it and he won't do it so this other guy steps up to do it and Corey throws him and the guy who's filming uh, actually took pictures and didn't film and that guy got hurt and couldn't do it again so I guess him getting injured for some reason gave Tucker confidence so Tucker stepped up took the throw screamed and um, you know kind of went viral and uh, I think from there I was able to it takes me about a month and a half to talk him into doing the next video but I've gotten to a point now where I can, you know, talk him into doing a video about every month and a half to two months. So the fame hasn't gone to them yet, right? Oh, it's unbelievable how much it has. Um, <laughs> he's a superstar now. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's got to make sure. And his wife, I think, hates me for it, um, for all the videos that he's become, uh, you know, this guy. And, uh, a funny thing, I was out in Boise, Idaho for a fight and, Roger Huerta walks up to me who, uh, you know, anybody that's been a fan of MMA for too long knows Roger Huerta. He's the first fighter to ever be on the cover of Sports Illustrated. So, you know, pretty I remember cool. that. And um, Roger Huerta walks up to me and goes, hey, man, I got to tell you, I'm a big fan. And I was thinking, oh, that's amazing. This is the greatest thing. You know, Roger Huerta comes up to me telling me he's a fan. And he goes, I love your videos. And um, I was like, I walked away so disappointed. And Corey goes, well, this is just, you know, your, your thing. You're always going to be the video guy now. You'll never get over that. And then a couple weeks later, Lindsay and I are flying, and we're walking through the Charlotte airport. I get stopped twice by people going, oh, man, you know, I'm a fan. Love your videos. And um, I just, you know, nobody's ever going to know me for fighting anymore after these. Didn't, you, didn't they show up like on a talk show or something like that? It was, it was, I know it was becoming a viral video. It had over millions of views, which is crazy, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, we, we did that one, and then we, we did about you know, probably four or five that, you know, went pretty viral that had, had some big views. And then we did the one, the double leg one, and that was the one that really took off and uh, went real viral. And I think that one's the one that you're talking about that's been on several things. Um, and uh, my favorite is when people post on it and go, oh, that was a setup. Like, of course it was a setup. Nobody's <laughs> talking to the camera. But that's wrestling we, we, we actually have this video like uh, ready to go. Do you guys want to watch it? Yeah, let's check it out. Oh, yeah. Let's watch Tucker go flying. And just, just so everybody knows, that perfect double leg being shot in the foreground, that's my wife shooting her perfect double leg. Lindsay's awesome, man. Lindsay's always been your sidekick. She's always been there for the run. And a uh, big shout out to Lindsay for always supporting John and uh, always being there for him. So I definitely Thank love to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to show Lindsay a little bit because she, you know, uh, hopefully she's wearing leather right now. I'm, I'm, well, I'm hoping. The the problem is she's been laying out by the pool, so she won't get on screen. Oh, okay. Well, thank you, Lindsay. 
I love you, Victor. We miss you. I love you, too. I love you, too. So with that being said, what do you think, JP? Should we do our, our final round of uh, yeah, JP's do questions? Round. Let's do the final round. So, all right. We start with, if you had a superpower, what would that be? Oh, a superpower? Um, I mean, definitely want to be Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Seems like. All right. So that your right answer uh, pretty much this next question would be a superhero, right? So Spider-Man. Oh, yeah, okay, sorry. Shoot webs out of my hands and then be Spider-Man, I guess. <laughs> All right, that's good. Uh, if you could only eat one food ever again. Um, I think deep dish pizza. Deep dish The Chicago one? Oh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> drink? We already know the drink, right? What kind of drink would it? Yeah, to answer that, we'll just Mountain Dew. <laughs> Mountain Dew. They don't even pay me for that, so you know it's good. If you uh, if you could only travel to one place ever again, um, gosh, I think I'd say Italy. I think that was, I mean, uh, Israel was amazing, but Italy. If I could only go one place again, I'd go there again. Awesome. And uh, if you had the chance to have one hour conversation or hang out with anybody in the history, right? Anybody from any industry, like any time, who would you choose? Um, I think Teddy Roosevelt. And he'd probably say that I'm really soft compared to him, but what a what an amazing person. You know what we had we had someone answer this uh, or ask to the same way. They wanted to meet Teddy Roosevelt too. It's because uh the rumor is that he was a grappler too, right? He was He's grappling he's a, or something like guy, that? Like they say. Um, yeah, I think so. I think he uh, I think he uh, did a lot of different type of martial arts and just seemed to be, you know, kind of guy that would make us seem really soft. I think that was Dom Bell, right? That said that? Yeah, it was uh, Dominic Bell. He had mentioned it too. Yeah. So, um, if you had a wish that would uh, a genius came and he he's giving you a uh, one wish that's going to be up for 24 hours what would you choose uh either yeah i think you know the politically correct answer would be the coronavirus is gone but i gotta be honest <laughs> but it would be for only 24 hours if i could yeah, come back in 24 hours oh okay well then that my dogs could talk to me. I just need to know what they're thinking. <laughs> that was a good one. That was a really good one. Yeah, uh, that's my last round round of questions. And time to pick the... Time to pick a winner, right? Time to pick a winner. What's the answer? Uh, the answer, how many How many sodas did we say, John? If you remember. If not, I have the number uh, here. Not two. Not do I drink in a month? And my wife just made a really bad face at me. Like, thinks I'm a disgusting person. <laughs> so 90 cans of Mountain Dew. So three per day. Right, John? Yeah. That's right. 90. So the winner was... Let's see. Let's go through the... So we have 62 and... 62 and... Yeah, 62 is the closest one. The closest Everything one. else is the, like, wait, actually, no, we have 112. 112. So let's. I got to say, see. when everybody's guessing under 60, you really make me feel badly about myself. <laughs> uh, 60 is only two a day. How am I going to live off that? It looks like the, the, the correct one was 112. 112? 112. 112. Andres. That's the guess. Andres would know this, I guess. Andres. Yeah, I guess Andres. He knows what it's like to drink a Mountain Dew and eat an Uncrustable. <laughs> oh, man, that just sounds like diabetes, man. All right, Andres is the winner today. 112 Mountain Dews. 112 Mountain Dews. Congrats, Andres. And I just want to give another shout-out to uh, Break Grip. Thank you guys for uh, Chris especially. Uh, thanks for uh, providing this uh, gift card for us to give out here on the show. Uh, those guys, like, they have a 
awesome line of clothes, like clothing line is like shirts, hats, you know. Uh, they also have a jacket, you know, that you can wear um, for uh, if it's raining. How do you call that jacket? You got a raincoat, like a rain, a rain, windbreaker? Rain no, like really, really good stuff. Go there and check them out, guys. It's breakgrip.com. B R E K grip.com. All right. Uh, again, I want to also shout out to trapbdj.com. You guys are doing an amazing job. We thank for letting us run the show here on your platform. Really appreciate that. And uh, I just want to thank you again, John. Appreciate you, you on the show. You, uh, thank you, you know, that was fun. All, all the throwing the knowledge, you know, like sure, sharing your journey. And and Victor too. Victor, thank for always like actually v Victor really connected this uh, interview. You know, Victor really put it this us together. So thank you, Victor, so much. Yeah, no, it was, it was a reason to get to talk to John again. So it's always nice to be able just to talk to John and see he's Hollywood now with his glasses. I don't even get to see his eyes anymore. So it's just, um, I guess I want to just give out a big shout out to everyone who's watching. Again, um, all the support. And also, I appreciate everyone who's watched and asked John questions, dropped him a comment. And um, a big shout out to Bass, uh, hashtag Boss Mama. So for those that know about Boss Mama, uh, we'll know what that means. Uh, but John, do you have any final thoughts? Anything you want to just uh, give a shout out to or just discuss before we close the show? Um, you know, I appreciate you guys having me on. I hope everybody at home that's uh, dealing with Corona is, is doing okay and just continue to pray that we get this and uh, it's behind us soon. Perfect. Thank you guys again. We'll see you guys on the next show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate Have it. Have a good one. Good one. See guys. you guys.